When I first visited Okinawa Island, I did an installation with a coral, and the corals are all white, and it's a stone, it's like a, a round shape. It's very cute. So I liked it to be the house to be like an extension of that. It's like a part of uh, uh, nature. I wanted to transform this uh, uh, tradition into contemporary art. And I thought that artwork expressing to honor nature may help to protect nature itself and to, to protect environment and also to remind us that uh, we are also nature. So this is a little post, a round post, and the window for the entrance. They change the color by the angle. I'm Mariko Mori. Uh, I born in Japan, Tokyo, and uh, lived abroad for uh, over 34 years, for five years, uh, mainly in New York and partially in London. I'm an artist and I'm very happy to be an artist. We are in Miyako Island, Miyako Jima part of Okinawa uh, Island, uh, very south part of Japan, and it's a tropical island. It's very well known for a uh, very rich, uh, a healthy, uh, beautiful corals. So this building I designed, uh, it's my first architecture project I ever done. And the name is Goyuputira. It's honoring a, a god, sun god name of the village of Karimata. Since 2007, I first landed in Miyako-jima. The purpose was to find a, a, like a location for my studio, 2007. But then I went to uh, sacred places and play for the uh, play for the god to uh, provide me the, the site for the studio, but instead I received a vision of the work called um, Primal Rhythm. Originally, I was thinking of just building an architectural uh, uh, building, but uh, maybe uh, it become more like a sculptural form because I was making a lot, studying the shape. Uh, but this shape was really trying to accommodate the natural, um, the wind, it's coming from the north, very strong. So I had to make the uh, resistance towards to the wind smaller. So that's why the north part is a little bit smaller. And then it's bigger on this side. So it, the, in a way, the shape, it's reflecting a geo geographical kind of a phenomenon. So this place is like a more contemplation and drawings and really to kind of um, receiving energy from nature and uh, kind of uh, uh, try to be uh, more centered, like a little bit like a meditative uh, uh, kind of place. Since 1996, I, when I was traveling, uh, for my photo, large photographic work, 
I was traveling like a, a painted desert or like a cave in France or Dead Sea uh, or flaming cliff like in mountains. So I visited this kind of a, a very rich and powerful uh, natural uh, site. And that experience is actually like a, was a mind opening experience for me because I realized that human is really tiny a uh, uh, portion of a uh, whole nature. And uh, I started to understand the dynamism of Earth. Uh, so since then, I kind of shifted my work and focused a little bit. Philosophically, I was kind of uh, more wanted to understand uh, Buddhist philosophy and uh, uh, Shinto traditions and so on. So, um, but 2010, I founded a non-profit organization called Fao Foundation, which to install site-specific installation per continent. It's really to honor nature. The, the tradition of honoring nature is it's, it's heavily embedded also in Okinawa and Miyako Island as well. It's uh, even perhaps older than Shintoism. It's called uh, more ancient Shintoism that here carried out. And so it's purely really to honor nature and to really um, respect nature gods. When I visited many uh, prehistorical sites around the world, it was a uh, uh, there's a, a evidence of how our uh, remote ancestors are really uh, uh, only nature and had a deep relationship between nature. And so it's very relevant. And therefore, it's just for us to, to remember that notion and, and also how human were able to be a caretakers of nature as well as more being more humble to the nature and uh, perhaps had true wisdom about nature more than us more than modern human being so uh, i did kind of discovered during the research and i wanted to share this kind of discovery with a contemporary culture uh, so that we could have healthy relationship with nature. From my personal experience, when I had a chance to spend time in front of ocean in 2003, I kind of started to understand the rhythm of the nature by, you know, the ocean, high tide, low tide. And uh, I also f feel that I am part of that rhythm and I dis discovering my own uh, kind of a natural um, part that which I didn't see it before when I lived in city. And so I think the separation the, the physical, we are part of it, but the mental separation between nature and human made that uh, kind of uh, visible war, well, invisible war between nature and human. Because there isn't really the war between, but that uh, conceptually we build the war. If I'm, if I'm allowed to be in Miyako Island in the winter solstice, yes, I, I do performances. So the, the vision of the sun, go back to Sun Pillar and Moonstone, came already at the very first visit in 2007 at the Seiko site. And uh, I, you know, the, I had to kind of carry that. Uh, so, the, the saving I did for making the house 
end up being become artwork. This room is a tea ceremony room. Usually have a guest and offer tea and do a chanoyu uh, kind of a ceremony. So the way really to connect with uh, people together. And I, I really think that really uh, could provide a special moment. I I born in Tokyo, but uh, when I was two years old, uh, my family moved to uh, Philadelphia. So I went to kindergarten in Philadelphia. My mother is art historian and uh, uh, specialized in the Peter Bruegel's and Bosch paintings. Uh, so um, when I was child, she used to just uh, um, kind of pass me to these books of Peter Bruegel's and Bosch. And uh, that was really like, uh, you know, the first, the real painting, the Western painting that I en encountered. And the Bosch was very strong image. So, uh, but, uh, I, I can even remember how shocking it was for me and I, I'm sure I had a nightmare from that <laughs> but but um, uh, I remember around when I was nine years old I was looking uh, through her collection of postcards of all the Western art and um, Mm, she usually have mostly like a Renaissance art, Northern Renaissance art, but somehow I found Jackson Pollock number no. 13 paintings. <laughs> and I was so thrilled. I didn't know what the abstract painting was, but I didn't know what exactly it was, but I really felt freedom and uh, really, really stuck in my mind. And I didn't discover that was like, uh, you know, the contemporary art until really uh, when I was 19 years old. But when I first visited London, I met with a group of people who started to do installation artwork. And that's the time I really seriously, like, uh, thinking how you know powerful the art can be, especially to use whole space. There was something very new to the world anyway, but it's for coming from from Japan. It's like going to Mars or something. <laughs> so it was a really mind-opening experience. My grandmother was a. a, a teacher of tea ceremony and uh, since my mother was quite busy of her work as an art historian and and often went to Europe I often stayed with my grandmother and she's busy teaching tea ceremony but I knew if I go to the tea room I could have a suite <laughs> So I often go to the tea class, and not necessarily, you know, the, the practice, the tea ceremony, but it's really the purpose of getting the sweets. Um, but I really like the sense of scent from the um, incense, and also the, the healing of the water sound, and uh, also the how people move around on the tummy mat and you know all this like a very um, the, the 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 senses mm -hmm. after i came we we came back to japan i think i was like a three years old and i could only speak english at a time and uh, so it was like a, a different kind of completely different kind of like a experience finding out the Japanese tradition uh, uh, through my grandmother. 
It was a such a uh, jump. Uh, when I study abroad, I started to really appreciate this kind of traditional aspect of Japanese culture. Uh, but my my grandmother passed away when she when I was 30 years old, and uh, I decided to study tea ceremony quite seriously. Mm. So uh, and also when I was producing artwork in New York, uh, I felt that an understanding of my uh, uh, country's uh, traditions. Uh, which were really important to find my own identity. Uh, so that was quite necessary for me to really start to learn about the traditional culture, uh, uh, kind of out of necessity, because in New York it's like a wild, uh, you know, all different kind of culture, and you always been asked you know, about your culture. And uh, I wanted to make sure that I answer correctly. <laughs> yes, but uh, uh, but at the same time, I felt that um, I was very much interested in, in uh, 70s, like uh, the conceptual minimal art and art works, and which were very much influenced by Zen Buddhism and uh, uh, many of them are students of uh, Daisetsu Suzuki so uh, you know I thought that uh, it's, it's very relevant for, uh, for, for us to really introduce the, uh, the Zen Buddhism in a uh, proper way and the tea ceremony is actually endorsed the uh, Zen Buddhism, so it's it's kind of a um, it's a good way to kind of uh, capture that. Mm -hmm. It's good to kind of a uh, uh, practice myself also to learn um, the the philosophy of Zen Buddhism. Really, the the process of making my own work is that way to kind of develop because uh, sometimes the technology is not yet introduced so sometimes I need to uh, either wait or to develop new technology for the work so I collaborate with uh, scientists and engineers uh, and uh, kind of a, a both software and hardware um, in order to produce the work that I want to produce. But at the same time, um, the, the research for uh, the technological part, but it's also like a fundamental part for the work. Uh, I often um, kind of do parallel. And uh, so c combination and uh, mixture of like uh, the beginning, the earlier work using the photography, but towards to after maybe year 2000, um, the, the, the direct research is really uh, reflecting into my work. So, such as Zen Buddhism or the Shinto tradition, but as well as, as, well as like more prehistorical culture like a Jomon. Uh, which were very relevant and uh, even um, like a Celtic culture as well that I was very much uh, interested in. By researching the idea comes and by idea comes developing a new technology and so on. So that's how like during the process that my work being developed. First of all, when I was a child, uh, the first TV was black and white, but I was so fun of Astro Boy. And uh, Tezuka Osamu was like uh, uh, really, uh, his animation was really the, the, the popular culture, mainstream popular culture that I was uh, live within. 
and, and he often uh, illustrates the futuristic world. And uh, uh, I was really fond of that. Uh, but also, at the same time, um, the future is something that we can change, and the future is something that we can imagine, and our imagination reflecting the reality, and we are producing the future, therefore. So, I feel like it's, it's, uh, uh, we have a freedom to, to create our own future. However, it seems to me that a lot of key uh, kind of conceptual uh, idea are and you're gonna already carried out in in the past, and we were actually in the we are in the point to inherit those ideas to the future. So the the looks perhaps quite futuristic. But our mission is to kind of inherit something that treasured, mm -hmm. that we also need to treasure to bring into the future. The Tom no Fury is one of the work, it's dedica more dedicated to um, Rebirth, the concept of rebirth. The, the name of the Tom no Furies came from ancient Celtic words. Uh, it's words of heaven where the uh, ancestor all goes to the heaven and spend time in Tom no Furi before they come back to the life again. So they already had a concept of a reincarnation, of a rebirth and uh, and then this work is uh, connected to uh, a neutrino detective system, Super, Super Kamio Kande. So every time they, dis they detect a neutrino, it displays in my work. And when um, supernova explosion happen uh, within uh, our galaxy, uh, we will receive a massive number of a neutrino. Then the work will display with different colors of the light. So you will see the, the death of a star in our uh, galaxy. But death of a star is the beginning of new life because that's how the bringing the, the heavy atom to the earth, that's the life begun. So um, something like this that uh, I'm honoring uh, the, the ancient Celtic uh, uh, the worlds, but it's also like a bling in to the current, uh, using the current technology and using the current language uh, in order to kind of reintroduce this idea. The, the idea of uh, um, the universe also kind of, uh, it's called uh, Echipilotic Universe or Endless Universe. The universe itself is also like, uh, has a kind of a rebirth in a way, so it's like a circulate. And uh, the so idea was that before Big Bang was uh, Blaine and Blaine it's kind of collide and that's how the Big Bang start. Uh, so this kind of circulates, so this idea or even the universe does this circulation and I was very much inspired and so I made a work called Ekpirotic String uh, as a series. So that's how the, I, I guess the, the recon, idea of reincarnation mm -hmm. is um, it's displayed in, in my work in mm -hmm. that way. At the time, even now, uh, I really um, mm, I was inspired by ko uh, Iwakura in Japan, which is like a stone. Uh, it's uh, 
the stone that has been worshipped since Kofun period, which is 5 to 7 century. And uh, the stone, either like a landing stone for nature gods or the gods live in. Uh, so it's like uh, the stones that have been uh, worshipped. So I was very much inspired by that, but I visited so many different uh, uh, Iwakura around uh, Japan. I thought that uh, the stone, I feel like a stone that has a memory of Big Bang. Mm -hmm. It's a very romantic idea because obviously in the Big Bang, you know, we don't have ours, but somehow I kind of felt that stone has a memory of Big Bang. The after shortly after Big Bang is the plasma state. So that's why I call it plasma stone. And then I wanted to produce the stone could kind of uh, symbolize that mm -hmm. feelings. Because I feel like a stone has uh, all those memories. Mm -hmm. It exists much, much longer than us. Uh, the stone that some people sit on stay there for millions of years. So that's, uh, that's kind of like a romantic idea, but that's how I named it. Creating things, it's really a uh, it, uh, true nature of human. It's creating things. If you stop creating things, then you no longer, I mean, you're not really using the, the most uh, ability of your being. It's a fundamental act. From my experience, is that um, really, I believe the art is the only, uh, only um, media uh, which have total freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, any other profession doesn't offer that freedom. And I think that's really uh, relevant for me personally. Uh, because you can do whatever you want, however you want, and uh, you can also liberate yourself as well. That's how you liberate yourself. We are creating our world by using our creativity, creativity. Even just the thought process or philosophy, I think that really uh, art support that. It's really um, essential. Our future, it's really dependent on our art. So most important things, it's very much connected to the soul. It's nothing that's more connected than art. Uh, direct connection, and since we have a language, like a, you know, the bub tower bubble, that we cannot really communicate sometimes because of the language barrier or culture barrier. But art transcends any of that because speak to your soul directly. That means we could communicate soul to soul through art. <laughs>